Hey guys and welcome to Let's Effects, the place for newbies, indies as well as low budgeters. Today guys, we're going to be talking about a topic that a lot of you have been requesting for a very long time now and that's how to actually boost the performance of your PC or laptop when running HitFilm or HitFilm Express. Now since I teach all of my tutorials and various effects that I've shown you guys over the years in HitFilm Express or HitFilm Pro, whichever one you're using, it makes sense that we make sure that that program is running optimally on whatever spec PC or laptop you're actually using. So in this video, we're going to be going over a few tips that I have for you guys that's worked for me in the past of things you can do, settings you can change and things you can actually, you know, configure on your machine so that HitFilm runs optimally so you get rid of all those lags and, you know, jaggy running junk. So before we get into the meat of this video, which is the actual tips, let's add another layer on, I don't know why I'm describing it that way. Let me give you guys a pretty tip. Now, obviously this is silly to even say as it should go without saying, but close any other programs you have running in the background while you're actually editing in HitFilm. Now this works whether you're doing uh, editing or whether you're on the compositing side of things, but if your PC or laptop generally tends to struggle a little bit when running HitFilm and you notice some lagging or some crashes happening, then definitely close all other programs, even things such as Chrome, which can have a significant decrease in speed um, on your machine. So close any other programs, Microsoft Word, Chrome, you like anything that will actually tax your system, close all of it, just have HitFilm open so that all of your PC or laptop's power can go towards HitFilm and making it run smoothly and optimally. But with that out of the way, let's get into tip number one and ease our way into things with turning off any heavy rendering effects in your actual timeline. So what do I mean by this? Well, during our editing process, we tend to add lots of effects that add uh, to the aesthetic appeal of things. So this is stuff like blurs, color effects, film grain, things like that. Maybe you're dealing on the VFX side and these types of heavy rendering effects come in the form of glows and um, excessive lighting type effects, you know, like the light wrap effect or things such as definitely the particle simulator effect. You know, things that sort of add to the heavy rendering side of things and tax your machine, but also things that you don't necessarily need to have on. So once you've gotten that particle simulator out of the way, you've set all the effects, turn it off for now while you focus on the rest of your scene. Or maybe while you're color grading and you get your look right, and now you still need to edit the rest of your sequence together, turn off those color grading effects so that it doesn't tax your machine when playing back because that can significantly slow down your actual performance when you're actually editing. So the next tip I have for you guys actually ties into the previous tip, which is about the look of your edit. So just like you don't need to see the fancy colors, you also don't need to be looking at full resolution or the resolution that you're going to see when you export while you're actually editing. So in order to speed up your playback process as well as your editing process, what I would suggest is turning the video quality down from full to actually half. And if your PC still struggles, turn it down to quarter because it doesn't really change what you're looking at. You can still see it pretty clearly. It's not completely pixelated if you're wondering something like that but it just sort of turns down the playback resolution of your video so that your PC doesn't have to render full HD or you know heaven forbid full 4k footage when you're actually editing it. So this will smooth over your playback make it way easier to edit and scrub along the timeline which can be really you know irritating if you have it in full and your computer is struggling and you want to scrub along with the playhead it can stutter a lot and just make you want to smash your keyboard into something so turn it down to half and maybe even quarter and you'll save yourself another headache so let's take a quick break from the tips to talk about something that i want to tell you guys about so we all know about skillshare now before you try and skip forward to get to the next step let me just make something clear this video is not sponsored by skillshare but it is sort of linked to Skillshare. What I mean by that is that your boy actually has his own course on Skillshare. I don't know why I'm talking in the third person, but I'm that excited about it. So I used to, I made a couple of episodes of beginner series for HitFilm, and I realized that maybe this isn't the ideal place to put that. But a lot of you guys I know are just starting out and you come to my channel trying to find how to do cool effects and you see things like Killer Frost effects and sort of like voice effects and all these things. And you're trying to like, you know, you want to do all these things, but you don't know the basics of actually editing inside a program like HitFilm Express, which we all know is free. And so I thought, why not make a special course course where I can devote all of my time and resources for a couple of weeks, make a full on course, high production quality, scripted, fully locked down with all of my knowledge in one singular place and put it on a platform that all of you guys can access. And that is what I did. 
and it's on Skillshare right now. And so if you guys are interested in learning how to actually edit and you are a beginner and you want to know the fine details and sort of refine your craft, maybe even if you've been editing for a while now but you want to just dive into a beginner course and try and figure out, you know, the basics of an editing program, I would highly suggest checking out my course on Skillshare. Now, I am saying this is a free course because essentially, even though Skillshare is a paid platform, if you use my link in the description, you'll be able to get a free trial and in that free trial, it'll be a premium subscription, which means that you don't have to pay for those couple of weeks. I'm not exactly sure how long it is, but I think it's two weeks. Um, correct me if I'm wrong and it will be in the description, but you'll have a free trial and for the, for the duration of that free trial, you'll be able to watch any single course that you want on Skillshare, whether it's free or premium, such as, you know, my course. And if after your subscription expires and you decide that Skillshare isn't really for you, you can immediately cancel and not pay a single cent. So I would highly recommend you guys check it out. It will support the channel, especially if you watch my course and, you know, engage with me over there and tell me what you guys think about it so that my next course, maybe I can improve it and make it even better. Also leave your suggestions on Skillshare as well as in the comments for any other types of materials or types of courses that you guys want me to actually make in the future. But yeah, hope you guys check it out down below. First link in the description. Um, get your free trial. You don't have to pay anything for those couple of weeks. And afterwards, if you want to pay, there's a lot of different things on Skillshare. You can learn how to play the guitar. You can learn how to cook. You can learn how to garden. Anything you want to learn as well as, obviously, the main reason you go in there, which is like, you know, my course, which you can watch for free and stuff. So the next tip is something that I don't know a lot about, but what I'm going to do is tell you guys what I do know, and that's about editing in the right video codec. Now some video codecs are designed to be what's called delivery codecs, which is sort of the, the codec that you sort of output or export your video in, and other codecs are better for editing. Now as I said, I don't know a lot about this, but what I am going to do is actually link in the description, uh, put a link to my buddy Mike's video from Triumph Visual, where he goes into insane detail about different video codecs and how they actually work in HitFilm so you guys can actually go over that and learn a bit about video codecs and see which one will work better for your PC and the types of videos that you are shooting. Now generally what I would say what I generally stick to is video codecs such as you know mp4 and uh, h.264 and mov files. Now people will say that some of those are delivery codecs but um, you know generally if your PC is really struggling then you need to go into depth and find which codec is better for you even though it might take a little bit more effort in converting all of your footage and stuff like that. But for me, generally, what I stick to is sort of MP4 and it works for me. So if you're editing in something un uh, that's not MP4, that's not really working for you, maybe consider switching. And again, if you want to know a lot more about that, then I can offer, I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. So I'm rather going to link you guys to Mike's video in the description, check it out and um, perhaps you'll learn something. Side note, I am also going to link an article down below that really explains codecs well that I was actually reading um, on top of Mike's video, so check those two out, especially if you're having a problem on the video codec side of things. And finally, the last tip I have for you guys is to make sure that your actual machine is optimized to run HitFilm. Like, maybe your machine isn't actually meant to run HitFilm, you need to do a little bit of upgrades on the side. So what HitFilm does, I'm going to actually leave it over here, HitFilm says then you need 4GB of RAM, a 4th generation Intel Core processor or the AMD equivalent etc to run your actual you know hit phone but four gigabytes ram really really is on the so if you can only afford four gigabytes of ram definitely it can work i mean that's the basic what they need but what i would say is that if you have a little bit of cash if you save up maybe try and upgrade your laptop or even i mean your pc or even your laptop to eight gigabytes of ram as you will see a significant increase or a significant jump and boost in the productivity and smoothness of running headphones. So I, I, in my old laptop that I used to have, it used to have four gigabytes of RAM. And instead of buying a whole new machine Im immediately, what I did was I just upgraded to eight gigabytes of RAM from four. So essentially doubled the RAM amount and it significantly increased the sort of speed of my editing. At the time I was editing in Premiere Pro and it significantly increased the speed and this will work for headphone as well. So what I would say is check the RAM on your, compu on your computer, your laptop or your PC and um, consider maybe upgrading it or doubling it to maybe eight gigabytes as a basis, uh, a basic level, I would say, and uh, you should see a speed increase. And then we have tip number five, which is clearing the cache inside of HitFilm. Now clearing the cache should give you some sort of speed increases, especially in playback. But what I would say is if you're going to do this, and I'm going to tell you how to do it just now in just a little bit. If you're going to do this, wait till you've actually completed most of your project. So try and do it when you don't have a lot of projects running in the background, or like maybe you're still working on a few things because it will delete a lot of that saved data. You won't lose your project per se, but there are a lot of files that HitFilm creates to actually 
help itself along while editing that it will need to recreate. So if you're still busy on specific projects, um, this could actually do the opposite and slow down your progress. So let's say you've just completed most of your projects, you're about to start new things, then I would say clear the cache and you should see some speed increases, especially if you're starting brand, brand new projects. So basically what this does is it frees up some of the space in the cache by deleting old files. Uh, even though HitFilm does delete this, I think around every 30 days or so, and uh, maybe, you never know, there could be a corrupt file in there that's slowing down, although HitFilm does say that this is very uh, highly unlikely, but um, it could happen, and so clearing the cache, especially once you're done with most of your projects, couldn't hurt. What you can also do with the cache is actually allocate more storage space on your PC for the cache, um, and this will actually speed up your RAM previews, um, which, hey, that's never a bad thing. And so to do this, what you wanna do is go to File, Options, and then Cache. Then set the RAM preview usage to high and delete the media cache. So those are some tips to actually speed up your workflow in HitFilm. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below, as well as leave a like on this video, as well as share it with all of your buddies, especially ones who are using HitFilm or any other editing program that they need to be sped up. And uh, tell me what you think. Tell me if some of these tips have worked for you guys. I'm always happy to help. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Subscribe. A lot of you are not subscribed to this channel, which is crazy because we put out quite excellent content. <laughs> I'm joking, but uh, definitely consider subscribing. You'll be alerted when all of my new videos come out, if any come out at all, which I'm trying to be more consistent with my uploads. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Check out some of the videos on the end screen as well as I will link my video on how to build the ideal VFX and video editing PC, which is a really cool episode I did a while back. I still love it. I'll link it on the end screen of this video. And until next time, I will see you guys, I don't know what this is, in the next video.